today i am going to tell you about coulomb law okay coulomb law it holds goods for static charges static charges means the charges which are not moving means they are <coughs> placed at one point they are not moving now according to coulomb law if two point charges we can say q1 and q2 okay let us say that point charges are q1 and q2 if they are placed at a distance r apart from one each other then the force acting between them either the force of attraction or repulsion okay say f therefore acting between them will be directly proportional to product of charges okay this is your equation number 1 directly proportional means if the value of product of q1 q2 will increase the value of f will increase if the value of f will decrease the value of q product of q1 and q2 will decrease this is directly proportional and it has been also found that the force acting between them is inversely proportional to 1 upon r square this is equation number 2 inversely proportional means what do you mean by this it means that if the value of f will increase then the value of r will decrease and if the value of f will decrease the value of r will increase now i will combine both the equations 1 and 2 combining both equation 1 and 2 so f is q1 q2 upon r square okay now i will remove this sign so this will come k q1 q2 upon r square the value of k is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 upon r square 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not is a constant and its value is 9 into 10 to the power 5 9 into 10 to the power 5 newton meter square upon coulomb square this okay the value of this is 9 into 10 to the power 5 newton meter square or c square epsilon not is the permittivity of free scale so this is called coulomb's law okay is this clear to you all i am going to repeat it the coulomb's law holds good for static charges that charges which are not in moving now let us suppose that the two point charges q1 and q2 are placed apart at a distance of r from each other let the force f acts between them the force can be either attractive force or the repulsive force it has been found that the force acting between them is directly proportional to product of these charges and it is also inversely proportional to 1 upon r square now combining both equations we will get f is that proportional to q1 q2 upon r square now i will remove this i will find that f equal to k q1 q2 upon r square the value of k is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not and the value of 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not is 9 into 10 to the power 5 9 newton meter square upon second square epsilon not is the permittivity of free space this is coulomb's law thank you any doubt Yes, children. Today I am going to explain you about Gauss theorem. According to Gauss theorem, electric flux through any closed surface is equal to one upon epsilon non times the net charge enclosed by the circuit surface. I am again repeating it. According to the law, the electric flux phi e through any closed surface is equal to one upon 
epsilon naught times the net charge Q enclosed by the surface that is phi E equal to integration of E dot dA is equal to Q upon epsilon naught. This is the Gauss theorem. Now I am going to give you the proof. For proof first of all I have drawn a closed figure. This is a charge Q is placed over here. That and this is an enclosed area, D, say dA, very small segment. So I have taken the area dA. Now distance from O is R, uh, and I, when I have drawn the axis, the angle between them is theta. So let point charge Q is situated inside the closed figure at point O. This is okay. Now let dA be a small area element surrounding point P on the surface. This. Okay, this is the area. Let OP is R. Let electric field intensity at point P due to charge Q is E. From this due to this charge Q, the electric field intensity at here is E. You can say E. This is E. Okay. The electric flux to the surface dA will be given by d phi E equal to E dot dA. This is the scalar product. Now when I will expand this, it will come d e dA cos theta. The and the value of e is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q upon r square dA cos theta. This is already you have proved. Okay, now further phi d phi e equal to q upon epsilon naught d omega d phi e equal to q upon omega naught integration of d over this is total electric surface now when i will solve the value of integration of d over i is 4 pi 4 for pi 4 pi will be cancelled so it will come q upon epsilon naught so this is the proof of gauss theorem okay so what children you should note down the notes and prepare for yourself for competition as well as for board examination. Suppose many charges you can say Q1, Q2 and Q1 are placed inside the closed surface. Okay, Then electric flux through them will be 1 upon pi epsilon naught sum of all charges Q1, Q2, Q3 if minus charge is there that will be also added up to Qn that will be equal to summation delta uh, summation q upon epsilon now so this is the gauss theorem now so let us suppose that this is inside charge now let us suppose that the point o or you can say the charge is outside the closed surface then what will be the electric flux through it so if point charge q is outside the closed surface then electric flux will be zero now why it will be zero now i'm going to tell you so let us suppose that one a, a small area is here we can name it a d a1 and second is d a2 this is involved this is outward so electric flux through this area will be minus q upon 4 pi epsilon naught t omega similarly electric flux through this area will be area means d a2 will be q upon 4 pi epsilon naught d omega this is outward this is inward now just to find out the total electric flux to two areas we will sum up it you can see it is minus this is plus the magnitude is same so they will cancel it so if the point charge q is outside the closed surface the electric flux will be zero